Hello and welcome. For today's video, we explore some activities and information relevant to wireless network security. We will look at what's involved in setting up a wireless access point, or WAP, for your own wireless network, with particular emphasis on securing your network as much as currently available technology will allow. When you unpack your WAP, you'll attach it to your local network. This device needs an IP address for that network attachment, which must belong to the same subnet as the other computers on your network, so they can communicate successfully with one another. And of course, for your WAP to work properly, the wireless devices that use it to communicate must be able to get through it to your Internet Gateway so that they can access the Internet. To access that information on our D-Link WAP, we click the LAN button on the left-hand side of the control display after logging into this device using a web browser. This WAP starts out with a default IP address of 192.168.0.50, as documented in the user's manual. So to access the WAP for the first time, you would type http colon slash slash 192.168.0.50 into the address box in your web browser. Other WAPs use other default IP addresses, so check your documentation to be sure. On our test network, we use the following information to connect our WAP to the Wired Local Area Network, or LAN. This network uses a private IP network address of 192.168.1.0. Here, we assign a fixed or static IP address of 192.168.1.50 to the WAP itself. On the screen that's showing, this translates into the value static manual for the get IP from text box to tell it we will provide a manual assignment where the value 192.168.1.50 represents the associated IP address. This private Class C address uses a standard Class C subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, as shown in the subnet mask text box. In simpler terms, this means that 192.168.1 is the network part of that address, where any number between 1 and 254 is a valid number to associate with a device on that subnetwork. Of course, that includes the number 50, that we chose for this device. Note also that the default gateway for this subnetwork is 192.168.1.1. This is the IP address for the Netgear Internet appliance that attaches to our cable modem for Internet access and provides that access to the rest of our local area network. That concludes the LAN setup portion. Now we can move on to the wireless side and deal with some security issues. Next, click on the wireless button in the left-hand column to produce the WAP's wireless configuration information. This is where numerous security-related matters literally pop up, all of which we will dig through here. The first important field of note is labeled SSID. This stands for Security Set Identifier and is used to name your wireless network. When WAPs leave the factory, they come with pre-assigned or default SSID values. Because everybody shares these, you should change them to something you can both recognize and remember. In our example, the SSID name is changed from its default value D-Link to Arbor. We scanned our local network names before picking this one and chose something short and easy to remember. You should do likewise, but don't be afraid to write this information down and put it in a safe place. The next text box is labeled SSID Broadcast. By default, most WAPs broadcast their SSIDs in the clear to anyone within listening distance. Because this provides a potential for someone to start trying to break into your wireless network, we recommend turning off SSID Broadcast so that your network name is not public knowledge. That's why the value for SSID broadcast is set to Disable on the wireless configuration screen. If you can, you should do likewise for your network, but that does require you to remember the SSID value. 
The next security-related field in the wireless configuration screen is labeled authentication. As you can see from the screen on display, this can take many different values. Let's examine each one individually so you can understand what they mean and which ones to choose. Open system means that the wireless network is open to anyone who wants to use it. Technically, this setup uses an old outmoded form of security technology called WEP, or Wired Equivalent Privacy, where key values are communicated across the network. It's absurdly easy to break and break into. Essentially, this means there's no security, or very little real security, so we recommend against its use. Shared key is another WEP setup, but requires all devices to share the same WEP settings. This, too, is not at all secure, so we recommend against it as well. Open system or shared key means you can use either open system or shared key settings to access the WAP and is thus the weakest of all the wireless security settings covered here. Naturally, we recommend against this, too. WPA appears in the next six settings. It stands for Wi-Fi Protected Access and is a newer, stronger security technology used to protect wireless communications. WPA2 is a second, improved version of WPA and is even newer and stronger still. At a minimum, you want to use some form of WPA on your network and WPA2 instead if all devices support it. Ours doesn't, so we used WPA. EAP stands for Extensible Authentication Protocol and is widely used on wireless networks. It works with a special type of network server called a Network Access Server, or NAS, which explains why you'll find this on lots of corporate or organizational networks, but seldom in a home or home office environment. PSK stands for Private Shared Key, which means that the WAP and all wireless devices that wish to use it must know about the key used to encrypt communications outside the network environment. In plain English, this means you must know that key and enter it by hand into the configuration for each wireless device on your network. This is something else you'll want to write down and keep in a safe place. Without this key, your wireless network is completely inaccessible. Auto means that the devices in use will choose between WPA EAP and WPA2 EAP for EAP networks or between WPA PSK and WPA2 PSK on PSK networks. Because we've eliminated all open system and shared key entries from consideration as too insecure, and you probably don't have a network access server at your disposal, and thus lose the EAP entries, this effectively limits your choices to WPA PSK and WPA2 PSK and, by extension, WPA Auto PSK. Here, we cover WPA PSK as an example. To make the private shared key work, you must provide the same passphrase for the WAP and for all devices that wish to use it. Passphrase simply means the same thing as password, only passphrases are usually longer and more complicated. We created one called Silly String 56, or Silly plus String with a 1 for the I in Silly and String, followed by 5 for the number of characters in Silly, and a 6 for the number of characters in String. This effectively combines lower and uppercase characters with numbers in a pattern that's hard to guess which is what you want from a passphrase or a password. Once you set up your WAP, you must then go off and match that configuration for the computers or other devices you want to allow to use that device. We cover those details in another video. Please go to digitallanding.com for more information, other videos, and articles about your digital lifestyle.